Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. August 17th, John Mott. John Mott came to faith in Christ when he was an undergrad at Cornell University. He was among the first 100 students to sign up in Dwight Moody's summer conference in Massachusetts. The pledge was, it is my purpose, if God permit, to become a foreign missionary. Mott was still a student when he turned a group at Cornell into the largest and most active YMCA chapter on any American campus. In 1915, Mott enlisted 20,000 people to serve soldiers and prisoners, and in 1946, he received the Nobel Peace Prize for his work establishing and building up international Christian student organizations that work to promote peace. By 1951, Mott had enlisted more than 20,000 missionary volunteers. On this date, in 1895, John Mott founded the World Student Christian Federation. To keep going, you must choose to rest. John Mott noted the short blasts of the ship's horn, a sure signal they were nearing port. Soon, he'd step onto English soil, plan a conference, and gather influential students he could empower to share Jesus with the world. Evangelism was a high calling. It was his calling. But at that moment, a slight dizziness blurred his vision. He shook it off. In the three years since he'd established the World Student Christian Federation, he'd circled the globe, hosted conferences, and met with student leaders from more countries than he could quickly count. His wife said he hadn't taken a real break in years. The last she could remember was their honeymoon. Sure, weariness dogged him, but when one is called of God, shouldn't he give his all? John's friend, D.W., thought John needed more rest, and he owned many acres of lakefront property in Canada. And what a generous friend. Not only had he offered John's family any plot they wanted, he'd also promised to cut a road to the plot and give John all the logs he needed to build a vacation cabin. But John thought, who had time for such things? The Lord's work needed to be done. John debarked the ship and headed for the site of the next conference. The back-to-back -back schedule of the upcoming conferences would tax him. They would be intense and far-reaching, but with his daily disciplines of healthy eating, physical exercise, and daily time alone with God, John was confident he could persevere. He always had. John arrived at the conference, offered his smile, as he usually did, and a warm handshake to the helpers. But then John's head began to swim, and spots appeared before his eyes. The next thing he knew, he awoke on the floor with a painful bruise covering the side of his face and one eye. He had fallen, they said, and hit a stand. Somebody had called the doctor, and that wise man had ordered that John stay in bed. John would not be allowed to continue with the conference as he had planned. Diagnosed with a nervous breakdown, he wondered if his years of service to God were over. He couldn't stand that thought. For 10 years, John had trusted his iron constitution, but he pushed his body farther and longer than it could sustain. And now he lay in bed, and for the first time in years, he rested, prayed, studied the relationship of periods of rest to staying power in one's work. Eventually, he was strong enough to go home, convinced that God had designed his body for more rest and that it would help rather than harm his ability to serve. John took D.W. up on his offer of a vacation home. On a secluded island in the Canadian wilderness, John built a sturdy family cabin. Throughout the rest of his life, John continued to travel, but each summer, he and his family took extended vacations. No phone, no local telegraph, no easy access. John completely unplugged. He had always worked hard, and that didn't change. But the new John, the one who had learned to rest, kept going strong for the long haul. 
He clocked nearly two million miles of foreign travel and recruited tens of thousands of students to help him spread the gospel of Jesus. His service, fueled by rest, spanned more than half a century. And in 1946, 57 years after the breakdown, John received the Nobel Peace Prize for creating a peace, promoting religious brotherhood throughout the world. Mark 6.31 says, Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest for a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. In a world filled with busyness and distractions, what are you doing to ensure that you will finish strong? To keep going, you must choose to rest. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.